My expertise, as you know, is CIA, Marine Corps, three CIA secret wars. I had a position in the National Security Council in 1975 as the chief of the Angola uh, task force running the secret war in Angola. It was the third CIA secret war I was part of. The National Security uh, Law creating the National Security Council and the CIA, as you know, was passed in 1947. The CIA was given this charter to perform such other duties and functions as might be ne necessary to the national security interests and given a vague authority to protect its sources and methods. I think it was in the mid-80s that I coined this phrase, the thir Third World War, because in my research I realized that we were not attacking the Soviet Union and the CIA's activities. We were attacking people in the Third World. And I'm going to just quickly, in the interest of time, just give you a little sense of what that, uh, what that means, this Third World War. Uh, basically, it's the third, I believe, in terms of loss of life and human destruction, the third bloodiest war in all of history. They undertake to run operations in every corner of the globe. Uh, they also undertook the license of operating uh, just totally above and beyond U.S. laws. They had a license, if you will, to kill, but also they, they took that to a license to smuggle drugs, a license to do all kinds of things to other people and other societies in violation of international law, our law, and every principle of nations working together for a healthier and more peaceful uh, world. Meanwhile, again, they battled to convert the U.S. legal system in such a way that it would give them control of our society. Now, we have massive documentation of what they call the secret wars of the CIA. We don't have to guess or speculate. We had the Church Committee investigate them in 1975, gave us our first really in-depth, powerful look inside this structure. Senator Church said in the 14 years before he did his investigation that he found they had run 900 major operations and 3,000 minor operations. And if you extrapolate that over the whole period of the 40 odd years that we've had a CIA, you come up with 3,000 major operations and over 10,000 minor operations. Every one of them illegal, every one of them disruptive of the lives and societies of other peoples, and many of them bloody and gory uh, beyond comprehension almost. Uh, extensively, we manipulated and organized the overthrow of functioning constitutional democracies in other countries. We organized secret armies and directed them to fight in just about every continent in the world. We encouraged ethnic minorities to rise up and fight. People like the Mosquito Indians in Nicaragua, the Kurds in the Middle East, the Mongs in, in Southeast Asia. And of course, we have organized and we still do and fund death squads in countries around the world, like the Treasury Police in El Salvador, which are responsible for most of the killing of the 50,000 people just in the 80s, and there were 70,000 before that. An orchestration, CI, secret teams, and propaganda led us directly into the Korean War. We were attacking China from the islands, Kemoi, Matsu, Thailand, Tibet. Uh, a lot of drug trafficking involved in this, by the way, until eventually we convinced ourselves to fight the Chinese and Korean. We had the Korean War and a million people were killed. Same thing for the Vietnam War and we have extensive documentation of how the CIA was involved at every level or the national security complex because it's a very cooperative thing into manipulating the nation into the Vietnam War. And we wound up creating the Golden Triangle in which the CIA, Air America airplanes, were flying in arms to our allies and flying back out with the heroin. We launched the, the largest, this is something that Jimmy Carter did, Admiral Turner brags about it, the, the operation uh, in Afghanistan. Biggest single operation, I'm told, in the history of the CIA's secret wars. And sure enough, very quickly we produced the Golden Crescent, which is still the largest source of heroin perhaps in the world today. Trying to summarize this third world war that the CI, the U.S. National Security Complex with the military all interwoven in it in many different ways has been waging, let me just put it this way, the best heads that I coordinate with studying this thing, we count at least minimum figure 
six million people who've been killed in this long 40-year war that we've waged against the people of the third world. These are not Soviets. We have not been parachuting teams into the Soviet Union to kill and hurt and maim people, uh, especially not since 1954 when they developed actually a capability of dropping atomic weapons on the United States. They aren't Britain, British, French, Swedes, Swiss, Belgians. We don't do bloody gory operations. Uh, in the countries of Europe. These are all people of the third world. They're people of countries like the Congo, Vietnam, Kampuchea, Indonesia, Nicaragua, where conspicuously they nor their governments do not have the capability of doing any physical hurt to the United States. They don't have ICBMs. They don't have armies or navies. They could not hurt us if they wanted to. There has rarely been any evidence that they really wanted to. And that, in fact, is perhaps the whole point. If they had had ICBMs, we probably wouldn't have done the things to them for fear of retaliation. Cheap shots, if you will, killing people of other countries of the world who cannot defend themselves under the guise of secrecy and under the, the rubric of national security.